Thank you, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so, a lot has happened since I made this last video, and I've been reading a lot of material about vernacular, worldly, secular music, and liturgical art, liturgical music. Because I wanted to get a more accurate understanding of where people are with that. And by people, I mean the average Joe on the street. I don't mean the average person who may even be going to church. Definitely not the average Orthodox. And I'm pretty crestfallen about what I found. I'm not surprised. But it has clarified a few things for me. Solidified, crystallized, focused, a few things. So, here's the crux of it. Here's the crux of it. Accomplishing good does not give you the right to use worldly means, evil means. It's very tempting, and people say this all the time, oh, well, we're using rock music or hip-hop or rap, we're doing that to church the unchurched, because we want everyone to know that they're welcome at our church. No, you're not. No, you're not. Shut up. You're doing it because you like that kind of music, and you want to go to church on Sunday morning and tap your toes. That's really why, if you're being honest. Now... Think of it this way. And I do have, remember, considerable experience in prisons as a prison evangelist. So I do meet people who are coming from an urban, uneducated environment. I meet drug dealers, drug addicts. I've met prostitutes, pimps. I've met murderers, serial killers, rapists, pedophiles, baby rapers, literally, uh, I have one who has murdered a, a, a baby. Um, I mean, I'm talking about, these are some vicious acts that have been committed, okay? So I'm dealing with people who are marginalized from basically every aspect of society. So I'm not sitting here on my great right throne. No. No. Why would such a person come to church? Now they're in prison, so is it to get off of their block? Sure, sometimes. But why do they keep coming back? What is it? And some of them, I've been able to get them to talk about that in a, in a little bit. I'm trying to prompt the conversation without seeding answers in their mind. What it is, is... It's something that's different because they know that what they have been doing up till this point in their lives is not acceptable. Okay. And I don't even care if they are incarcerated or not, or if they are a, um, you know, have been convicted of a crime or even charged with a crime. I'm using that population because that's where my experience is. But the point is, it is something that is different because they know that something has to change. So they don't come to church to hear a concert. They don't come to church so that they can wear, you know, jeans and scraggly t-shirts and, you know, lounge around and put their feet up on the pew in front of them and have a coffee. No, no. They come to church on their knees because they have realized, God has helped them realize, and they are finally listening to the fact that they're running out of time. And make no mistake about it, so are you and so am I. We're running out of time. We don't have time to crunk around, okay? So they come in and they say, well, my goodness, I never experienced anything like, like you know, that before with the, the beautiful texts and the, the formal order of, of worship. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, a 15 to 20 minute Malayan service 
or I'm talking about even the, the Roman Catholic, the lay communion service, which is also very short. I'm not talking about smells and bells and incense and beautiful vestments, because we can't take that in there, okay? F Father Martin has his felonia that he wears. That's like a little stole. But, um, you know, we're not... No. But it's different. Something in, in the language and, and in the simple chanting or the simple hymns, because when the Catholic priest comes in and says Mass, I'll play the organ in the back, there's like a little... Uh, it's a clavinov, it's an electric piano, but it's it's a fairly decent electric piano. So I'll play some of the hymns, you know, and he lets me pick, so I try to do ones that are tasteful and have some historical precedent. See, what it does, what that level of formality does, is it elevates the heart and the mind and the soul from earth, from crime, from the ghetto. It, it elevates it from that despair and despondency up to God precisely because it's something different. It is very, very, very respectful. It is careful. It is done with attention. It is done with deliberation. It is always done with forethought and not because somebody had a whim. And they sense that truth. They sense the timelessness of it. And that is why they come, because God is calling them. And consequently, I don't believe in seeker-sensitive churches. Let me tell you why. If, if you, you probably already know what these are. If you haven't heard that term, Put it into Google, it's a thing, seeker sensitive, and you're going to come up with thousands and thousands and thousands of mostly Protestant websites that talk about, you know, wanting to be open and approachable to people who are uh, either new to the faith, maybe they feel compelled to go to church, but they don't, they don't know where to go, or maybe they were baptized, but then they kind of fell away as a teenager. You know, there's all kinds of reasons why people come back to church as an adult. And that's great. That's awesome. Of course, we should welcome those people with open arms and say, awesome, we're so glad you're back. Come on, get your butt in here. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, but the way that we do that is not by imitating the world. Because precisely the methods that God uses to draw all of us, by the way, not just them, not just you, all of us, back to the faith is something that is different than the quagmire of human self-indulgence and passionate slavery that we have adopted as our mode of life. When you walk into an Orthodox church, it is literally, you are standing in a place between heaven and earth. Literally. Not just in some imaginary way. Oh, my heart feels so light. No, shut up. Literally, in that spiritual sense, you're no longer on earth. You can't do that with a drum kit and a microphone and some screechy singer. Not going to happen. So then if you say this to some of these individuals, you say, uh, to, to the seeker sensitive Hip hop crowd, you know, whatever. And it's not again. It's not just hip hop. I'm capitalizing on that because that's the book that was published. So it's very easy for me to kind of, you know, talk about it as a thing. They'll say, "Oh, but we want to be seeker sensitive. We don't want to marginalize anyone." Blah 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 blah. I'm saying, no, nobody's talking about marginalizing anyone. Don't conflate the two. What we're saying is, we're not going to use earth, earthly, sensual. You know frankly, very sexual forms of music to reach people. If those are the seekers, if, if the seekers that are, if the seekers that you're trying to be sensitive to, seekers of which, as a dangling preposition, I hate it when I do that. If the seekers to which you are trying to be sensitive are going to come into the church and then, by which I mean enter into the building. I don't necessarily mean get baptized or anything. I just mean that they're going to come to a service, okay? Which is, of course, step one. If they're going to come to a service, but then they're going to leave in a huff because of the music or the vestments or the incense or the whatever, if they are going to leave because of the sound doctrine and the sound apostolic tradition, 
Or if you're a Protestant, but you're kind of a traditional Protestant, you know, if they're going to hate the Bach organ chorales, for example, or they're going to hate, uh, I don't know, the traditional sound doctrine. If they're going to hate that and they're just going to, you're going to, you know, lose them because of that, you never had them. That's not a convert. That is not a seeker. That is somebody who is looking to be entertained and indulged, and I don't have time for that. And neither do you. And neither does the universe. Okay? Do not, I'm begging you here, world of YouTube, do not compromise for the sake of butts in the seats. Do not compromise and tell yourself that you're being seeker sensitive when what you really are is you're being indulgent. You're being indulgent of yourself, you're being indulgent of other people. You know, tyrants really, who might come to church but then they're like, oh well you know, I'm gonna leave unless we do this praise song and blah blah blah. blah. Those aren't the right seekers. The right seekers will recognize the difference and they will understand in their hearts that they need to move toward it, not away from it. I have so much more to say and I'm at 11 minutes. So anyway, I'll, I'll be back probably in a few minutes. Bye.